everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for the Bondi Blue Show. Thank you for joining me. I hope you all are having a good week and we're just going to jump right into the ish talking topics you guys. I'm going to talk about it, okay? I'm finally here to talk about the Rob Kardashian and Black China fiasco on Instagram that's been going on for the past couple of days, okay? Now first, I was seeing posts and I didn't understand what the fuck was going on, okay? I kept seeing a picture of Black China in the bed with some other dude and another girl and her throwing a pillow. And then it was all about the Versace robes. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I started to read, okay? <laughs> all right? And I'll be feeling like reading all them fucking paragraphs on the shade room and ball alert all the time. So I'm just skimming, okay? And this is a skimming-ass video. This is basically how I feel about it. Not really verbatim all of the shit that took place because it was too much, okay? Apparently, Rob just found out because <laughs> apparently he didn't know that Black China been gaming him this whole time, okay? You was a lover in your secretary Working every day of the week Was that the time when no one else was there Helping you get on your feet <laughs> Okay, bitch First of all, Rob said I paid $100,000 for her to get her body fixed. Not everybody want their fucking money back for them, that flat tummy tea shit that everybody does. And then all of a sudden, all of the other reality show celebrities started to put out their endorsements of flat tummy tea all at one fucking time. So everybody could know that this ain't got nothing to do with flat tummy tea working, okay? It works. That bitch just got surgery on top of drinking the flat tummy tea because she wants some endorsements, baby. We gotta get this money how we can get this money. There is a dude named Ferrari that was in the pictures, okay? And Rob was posting naked pictures of China saying that she sent him those pictures and then went and fucked this dude and like three other dudes in like the course of a couple of days or a, a week or some shit like that. I can't really remember all of verbatims because he was just talking so fucking much. But just basically saying she been cheating on him, she scammed him. As soon as she got pregnant and got the sur you know, had the baby, got the surgery, then she threw up deuces and they ain't really been together ever since then. They keep trying to get back together, but the shit don't work. He's still trying to buy her affections, buying her all these calls and then repossessing the cars and shit like that and I'm like first of all who the fuck needs all them cars that's stupid I had that motherfucker buy me one really nice car <laughs> and put it in my name so he couldn't take that shit back okay and pay the bitch out full don't have me with no car note okay you gotta be smart about these things but I want to also say that I knew from the beginning when I first saw that them two was gonna be together I was like oh they gonna do a show she about to trap this nigga this that catchback we all been waiting on but being friends with the Kardashians namely Kim and having your little 16 year old sister fuck and snipe on my man like basically took that nigga okay basically took tiger now that tiger and kylie aren't together anymore all of a sudden all these problems starting between black china and rob and he said that she did it out of revenge and i'm like yeah yeah we knew that we knew that did you not know that how could you not know that okay and this is when we have to start to dissect what the fuck is wrong with rob okay Every sad, sad story I could think of. Every sad song, okay? Y'all sleeping in my bed, messing with my head. Y'all, like, it is what it is. Snoop Dogg commented on it. And because Snoop commented on it, T.I. felt like he had to comment. So he called him a duck-ass nigga. Just take the L and get off Instagram. And we all looked at T.I. like, nigga, we just stopped talking about you five minutes ago shut your ass up and be quiet okay don't talk about this shit because you ain't really got nothing to do with this shit okay you got your own problems so then rob kardashian decided to <laughs> retaliate and post about how they paid china to have a threesome and we all know that what well, we've heard allegedly that ti and tiny always was doing threesomes they dipped and dabbled. She was trying to do shit to keep her man happy, but to no avail, obviously, okay? And then he turned around and be on stage at the Escape concert, and she's singing to him and the baby and shit like that, and they holding hands and all of that, and I'm back being fucking confused. But that's why I don't try. I don't get my emotions all involved in other people's relationships, okay? But we all want T.I. to shut the fuck up because, dude, <laughs> okay, dude, okay? You worse. Let him be a duck. Use a straight up asshole. 
Okay, so shh. They snatched his Instagram, okay? And Instagram, he said Instagram did it, okay? And if that's the case, I guess it was because he was posting those naked pictures of Angela. <laughs> of Black China, okay? Um, and that's apparently revenge porn in California. You can go to jail for that shit. That, that could be an offense. His sisters came out and saying that they were not okay with that shit. They did not like that he did that. Even though they would probably be on his side otherwise because he did that shit. And the way he kept talking about it. It was just ridiculous. The only responses that Black China gave us was to continue to put out videos of her enjoying all of the riches that he has bestowed upon her. Her laying in the bed with a new Ferrari who is apparently a kind artist stripper nigga like we give a fuck. His little 15 minutes of fame is about to be over because lord I don't care. And Black China said that Rob abused her and I'm like he probably hit you one time and y'all was probably fighting. It wasn't, no, I'm about to haul off and beat this bitch ass. It don't really seem like that. You don't seem like the type of person that would let that shit fly. Moving on into other relationships that are baffling me this week. Scrappy and the Bam, okay? Now, what the fuck is going on with Scrappy and the Bam, you say? I saw all these posts that the Bam put out. It was basically text messages between her and Scrappy and him begging her to forgive him and to come back to him. And she telling him that she almost fell for it, nigga. She almost got her emotions and slipped back into bad habits, okay? But then she remembered how much of a dog-ass, manipulative nigga you are. And she decided to go ahead and tell you, fuck you, all right? And we all was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what happened? I hate when I miss the first post, <laughs> okay? And apparently... She meant that because he put Erica Dixon, his baby mama, in a music video that he did. Bambi, what the fuck? That don't mean he fucked her. That don't mean they together. Maybe that just mean my baby mama pretty. She got a nice ass. She needs some money right now. I'm going to put her in this video so I can throw her a couple of, you know, extra ducats for doing the video. And plus, she'll enjoy doing it. will put her out there whatever she want to do. Okay, not like we really paying attention to what the fuck Erica is doing ever since she got off of Love and Hip Hop. I still follow it on Instagram because I think she's a beautiful girl. But at the end of the day, really, bam? You mad about that? That makes you feel like he don't really love you? Now, granted, Scrap is not the most emotionally available, mature person, okay? We're just going to go ahead and be real about it. But it's moments like this that make me feel like Bambi isn't either. Because if you felt that way, why did you have to put that shit all on Instagram? All of the text messages he was sending you saying he loved you and he missed you. At the end of the day, he was pouring his heart out to you and you made yourself look bad by putting it out there on fucking Instagram like that because he put his baby mama in a fucking music video so what so what what does that mean does that mean something you know what i'm saying like first of all y'all are not together so if he did fuck up so what okay so what still talking about he want to be with you and as far as we've heard they not together they don't want to be together erica and scrappy should be over at this point i would be very surprised if they fucked around and ended up getting back together at this point because we've seen them go through this and try it time and time again they are not good for each other and that's just what it is now bambi you and scrappy starting to make me feel the same fucking way about y'all too because y'all constantly putting all y'all information out there on front street like y'all got a new season coming up y'all season is over and y'all asses wasn't even really on it. So save all of this fucking drama for your diary, bitch. Thank you. Any more love and hip hop news? Let's get the Jocelyn's fuck shit. Okay, y'all know that Jocelyn put out there on the internet, fuck Mona Scott Young, I quit. Ever since then, it's been going downhill. She's made videos claiming that Mona owns, uh, owes her hundreds of thousands of dollars, like $150,000, some shit like that. I can't really remember because I don't be paying attention to that bitch. She looked good in the video, though, real close to her face. Talking about why are you trying to make me look bad? Why are you, you know, showing videos from three or four years ago, Mona? Why are you trying to make me look bad? And it's like, bitch, you did those things at the end of the day. You did those things. And some of those videos wasn't three or four years ago. That was you being difficult on set for this season bitch not all of that was past situations we was just talking about the fights okay and they dated them we knew which reunions they was from okay but at the end of the day bitch they said over the course of you being on the show okay and you have been difficult and even though we all have rooted for you Okay, we have Tyra Banks this shit for you, okay? We have been out here rooting for your crazy fucking ass. But at every turn, you come out and you disappoint us. The things that you said about Stevie's daughters, I don't give a fuck if they are of age or not. 
Okay, there are certain things you shouldn't do. There's a line that you shouldn't cross. And you crossed that line when you got out there on social media and, and followed up that bullshit story by Mimi's cousin. I don't give a fuck. Nobody cares about Mimi's cousin. So if she says something, we don't care. But when Jocelyn puts it on her fucking Instagram that Stevie J is molesting his daughter, we gonna pay attention to that shit. So at the end of the day, you may not have started it, but it was you that brought it to our attention, bitch. Okay? And that still makes you just as wrong. And to cross a line like that, and for even for him to take you back is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Not a nigga making t-shirts talking about free Bonnie Bella because the bitch not letting him see his baby. If we didn't see this coming along the way, she's always been vindictive. She's always been crazy. It's always been like this. Over the smallest little thing. Y'all don't even realize how crazy of a fucking request it is for you to ask to be the only female art artist on somebody's record label. Bitch, are you out of your mind? That is what he does. The nigga makes R&B. Okay? Okay? That means he's mostly going to be working with females or have female artists on his label if he really decides to really work with the label and try to see it go someplace. Because, you know, motherfuckers have record labels all the time and they'll never come out with no artists and they'll never have nothing popping and never really do anything with their record label. They just got one. LLC. Okay? And I'm starting to feel like it's a drug front. I'm just saying. <laughs> just joking. Okay? Federal Hood, I'm just joking. Then, this friend of hers that apparently was on the first season, bitch, I don't remember, okay? Jocelyn's ex BFF, I don't even remember the bitch name. All I know is she was screaming and hollering in two videos with a red t shirt on, telling us how Jocelyn putting all her money up her nose. That's why she ain't got no money, and that's why she asking for more money. We've always heard that the bitch did coke. She acted right. We, we've heard a lot of you motherfuckers have done coke. Mimi, Stevie, her, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we all know, like, you know, some of y'all had to go to rehab. You know, these are issues that y'all have had. Nobody's judging y'all. People go through these things. Everybody does drugs for the most part. And I mean everybody. Like, throughout history, hundreds of thousands of people partake in drugs. So if this one motherfucker wants to come on my channel and say, I've never done drugs, bitch, we ain't talking to you. Fred is saying all this shit about how, how you gonna talk about Mona. Mona put you on. Fuck, Stevie Matter brought you to the table, but it was Mona that made your fucking ass famous. And now you gonna come out and disrespect Mona? And I'm like, bitch, who asked you? <laughs> Like, where you come from? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think anything she's saying wasn't true. I just feel like, bitch, who cares what you got to say about this situation? You ain't telling us no new information. And why is you coming out the woodwork trying to defend Mona all publicly and shit like you trying to get a spot next season? And you say you don't need it. You say you don't need it, but still, bitch, I mean, you could have said this when she said that shit about Stevie fucking his little girl. That would have been the first step of saying, hold up, bitch, you're going too far. That would have been the moment. Now that she didn't say something about Mona, bitch, you late. Okay, Mona is sitting down having lunch, okay, at Puffin Petals with K. Michelle, and she kind of was recording a video, okay? And K. Michelle didn't really throw direct shade. She kind of was the one that said, for all y'all talking shit about Mona, here's a living proof that, you know, uh, Mona will get you through, okay? Mona will get you to where you're trying to go. And K. Michelle is the perfect example of that. We didn't need y'all to make no fucking video for that shit. It was cute. It was shade. It was petty. We didn't need you to do it, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but we didn't need you to do it, okay? You don't have to say shit, K. Michelle. We already know that you're the most successful person to come off this goddamn show. And now that Cardi has come out, that's another person that, you know, is going to be successful based off this show, which seems to be a hard thing to do for everybody else that's on the show that's ruining their fucking lives and shit on the show. Okay, some people take it for what it is and make the best out of the situation. Jocelyn, you get in your own way. Nobody's fault but your own. All you people sign up for this shit. I know at the beginning you really don't know what you're getting into, but that's the decision you made and you gotta live with it. Don't try to blame Mona and don't try to blame editing. Motherfucker, we can only edit the video you give us. Free Bonnie Bell. The brat. Really, the brat? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Okay. <laughs> okay, I grew up on a brat. I love the brat. Okay, she was like one of the first female rappers to have like a platinum album at the time or some shit like that. Like she was like doing it. Okay, and me and my cousin Jermaine, all we did was listen to the brat when we was together. And we was always together. Okay, it's also the cousin that introduced me to my husband. So understand the special, you know, special shit associated with the brat. Okay. <laughs> the brat and James Brown, okay? All I think about when I think about Jermaine. And <laughs> if he watches this video, sometimes he watches my videos. Anyway, shout out to my cousin. I want my wedding video, nigga. The brat was on her little show, you know, you know the one 
This Nation, whatever the fuck that is called. Um, I don't really watch that shit. Uh, it don't seem like a bad show, but I just never really got into it. And she starts to talk about how back in the day before Kirk got with Rashida, they met and he gave her what it was? $1,200 bills. It was two stacks, right? I'm, I'm saying that right. Okay. So it was two stacks and he wrote his name and number on the back of each fucking hundred dollar bill. Okay, that is how you holler at a bitch when you're trying to pimp them out. What the fuck is that about, Kirk? Okay, not to say it's not cool, but why is you coming at me with money like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I feel like you're coming at me like a hoe. Like, don't disrespect me like that. Okay, I take money when it's nicely put into an envelope after we've gone out on a date and you're just trying to show love. But to, to get me to call you, nigga, you give me... $2,100, I feel, I feel dirty, but that's just me, okay, and the Brad took the money, and she said he, she got some nice shit out of that relationship, a couple of cars, and all of this type of shit, you okay, a car, she said she got a car out of the situation, plus that money, and I'm like, so Brad, are we really gonna act like you, you not gay, like, is it, <laughs> I can't fucking do it with y'all, okay, I cannot do it with y'all, really Brad, you not gay, really Brad, Really? You fuck Kirk? Word? It, back then, when you was wearing plaits and baggy clothes and no fucking makeup? Bitch, word? That's what you did? You fuck, you fuck Kirk Frost for a car? That's what you trying to tell me, bitch? I don't know what the fuck going on with the Brad and MC Light and them. Okay, we all know that Queen Latifah is still strong in her shit even though she ain't never said it. <laughs> you know, in so many words. You come out and marry gay people when they first started being able to marry gay people and, you know, that should let us know something, right? That shit, fuck out of here. I want a t-shirt that says I'm gay on it. Okay? <laughs> okay? All this fucking paparazzi video, you kissing bitches on boats. Okay? Like, use a pimp, bitch. Use a pimp. The brat, really, girl? Okay, look. I ain't mad at you for doing it, but I, that's all I can think about. Bitch, I thought you was gay. <laughs> Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. Y'all know Kenya Moore got married, okay? Kenya Moore got married and did it without talking to the Bravo. Okay, Andy Cohen, Real Housewives of Atlanta producers, God damn it, and they're pissed off, okay? They're mighty pissed off that first of all, they weren't invited, and now she's trying to not have him be a part of her storyline, especially when they already had it set up to have a closure scene with Matt, to have her moving on, and her little petty ass fake for television beef with Kim Zolciak and her fucking duck lips. Okay, ain't nobody got time. I don't care about that. If I wanted to see something, I would want to see you having a real relationship with somebody. Okay, bitch, I know that reality TV ruins relationships, but goddamn it, you signed up for this. And you've been giving us fake relationships this whole time or manipulated relationships. Not to say that you really wasn't fucking this last crazy nigga, Matt. But I'm going to just say that I feel like you manipulated the fuck out of that situation to get the outcome you wanted, which was a really good storyline. Okay, but at the end of the day, you got somebody now that's supposed to be real and you gonna tell us you don't want to put it on television you only want to put your contrived negative bullshit on the show really fuck you kenya i feel like the producers fuck you bitch either put your relationship on the show or sayonara bitch okay i'm sorry that's how i feel i don't feel like you should be able to get on a reality show that's based off of your life and not show us your relationship. There's ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? The way Monique and Chris do their shit on Real Housewives of Potomac. Even though Real Housewives of Potomac is slightly fucking boring as hell. <laughs> slightly boring as hell. Whatever. I still feel like I have a husband. I'm happy. But I'm not giving y'all too much of my relationship. Don't come on the show with all this fake shit. Have something real happen. And then now you don't want to put it on the show. Fuck out of here. That's the same thing the Phaedra and them be trying to do. And I'm done with that. Either be on the show or don't be on the fucking show. Pick one. You can't do both. Because now you're just being a greedy little bitch. Speaking of Real Housewives. Okay. We got some information on Karen Huga and her husband, the Black Bill Gates. Apparently, they owe the IRS one point, what, four, five, eight, something like that, one point five million dollars in back taxes, and his company, his technology company, owes like three million in back taxes. And this is my question: Haven't we learned from the red foxes of the world? Haven't we learned from Wesley Snipes? Haven't we learned 
that you have to pay taxes off, off the money that you make? You have to, or they will come and take all of your shit? I'm listening to Kevin Hart's audiobook right now, and the same shit happened to him too. And it's because y'all trust these stupid motherfucking managers with y'all money and to pay y'all shit when they really don't be taking care of it the way they're supposed to. They be stealing, skimming off the top, and then leaving you to pick up all the bills and shit. Not all of them, but I'm just saying, I've seen it happen many times. Life lessons, I don't have to go through it to learn from other people's mistakes. If I ever, okay, I'm sorry, no. When I start making mass amounts of money, <laughs> okay, I, I feel like I'm still going to be looking at my checking account app on my fucking phone, okay? It might be a nicer bank, okay? And I might have, you know, stocks and shit and, and CDs and places where you don't check that all the time. But at the same time, motherfucker, no, okay? I need to know how much taxes do I have to pay off this money as soon as you give me the check? Y'all ain't about to fuck over me like that, okay? <laughs> all right? I don't understand why people cannot pay their taxes or get the proper people you know that are uh, you know um that are in firms you know financial firms that have to you know do certain things because they're head under you know government guidelines or some shit like that why are you always not paying taxes people what the fuck okay i don't understand it i don't understand it i don't understand how rich people could not pay their taxes but poor people oh good goddamn you gonna take the taxes out my motherfucking check so i guess that should explain why they left their house before they could be evicted from it or before it could be taken from them and started to rent because renting means I can just give you the money that I'm making. Okay, it, you know, you can't take it as an asset because I'm just renting it. You know what I'm saying? So I can still have somewhere to live. That's probably why they did that shit. And he probably still is making enough money in order to pay his bills. So that's probably what the situation is. It's just that they owe money. <laughs> And they about to not be able to pay some bills. That's why they didn't buy the motherfucker. So now we understand, Karen, you are going through some financial issues, baby. Okay? That old ass nigga didn't forgot to pay the taxes. You said it's being handled. We'll see, bitch. We'll see. All right, y'all. Let's talk about Jay-Z's album. Okay, Jay-Z's album 444 came out last week on Tidal exclusively. Also with Sprint for a hot second. And a lot of you motherfuckers was mad, okay? Either you was a celebrity mad because he was calling you lame for putting money next to your fucking face like it's a phone. First of all, I think money has a lot of germs on it because it gets passed through a lot of hands. So I don't understand why motherfuckers put money on their face with all of the germs that are on money. And you put it on your fucking face next to your mouth. What are you thinking about? You're going to get a rash right here. What are you thinking about? That's my problem with it, okay? Jay-Z feels like there's a disconnect there, okay? He made some lyrics about Kanye in a couple of, you know, in one song, uh, Kill Jay-Z because he's trying to get rid of the old him. He wants to be Sean Carter, the more respectable black man that has kind of a, a old Bill Cosby feel to him, you know? I'm supporting black culture. I'm putting black paintings on my walls. I'm play playing black musicians. I'm, you know, drinking Ciroc because Diddy's black. Okay, like, okay, like I'm trying to uplift my coach. I'm trying to teach him something. He said, I'm trying to give y'all a million dollars, you know, worth of information for $9.99. He was trying to let y'all know something. He also used this album to apologize to Beyonce for being a fuck shit of a husband, okay, and having to have his child come into the world for him to understand the gravity of the shit he'd done. They've had miscarriages because he wasn't around and he out here fucking Becky's and shit like that. Whole bunch of stuff. So basically co-signing what she said and apologizing and making us remember how awesome that moment was in the elevator. He also said that he egged Salon John. He knew he was wrong and he was just egging her fucking on. And I know exactly what he probably was doing. He probably was doing some dumb shit. She said some shit and then he was, you know, saying a little slick shit. And then she was like, you must have forgot and started wilding on this nigga like regular, you know, bitches would. I think it's an epic album. Me and my homeboy got into a whole argument last night because this motherfucker doesn't like Jay-Z, okay? They got a lot of southern dudes that for some reason don't really take to New York rap, feel like niggas be rapping too hard and shit like that. I feel like that's dumb shit because then you bring up Biggie and everybody gets quiet. Shh, be quiet, bitch. You don't know what you're talking about, okay? Um, I feel like there's a level of hate with some of you niggas, okay? There's a lot of Nina Simone being mixed in there. There's a song called Caught in Their Eyes with uh, Frank Ocean that I love to beat on, okay, the uh, the OJ story. He starts the song off with saying, OJ said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Okay, like really, nigga? <laughs> okay, yes, we live these moments in history where black people have always come out and tried to make it seem like they're ashamed of being black and then leaving the rest of us that look up to you because you black and you made it like you throwing us to the wayside, okay? I mean, I'm tired of that, okay? I'm tired of that shit. That's going to be my rant for the day, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Epic. 
It's awesome. Great beats. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, I loved it. It was a, a, a ride that I can listen to every song. So if you haven't heard it, you should definitely find a way to check it out. They've probably put the shit on YouTube already. <laughs> with a fucking clap hand. Let's get into the letter, y'all. Okay, so in 2012, I began a relationship with a man I met in a club. Hashtag big mistake. Okay, she put it in parentheses, but I'm gonna upgrade it, okay? After a month of dating, one night we slept together and he didn't pull out and didn't tell me until I was sitting on his lap afterwards and felt it coming out. This has happened to me before. You niggas are terrible. Uh, I asked him, what is this? Because I had never experienced that before. He admitted he didn't pull out and then the next day randomly told me if you end up pregnant, we gonna get that taken care of. So you mean to tell me instead of pulling out <laughs> without a condom, all of this shit, we just gonna get it taken care of next day. Really? Really? That's what we do? I'm sorry, y'all. I just had to take a moment because that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Uh, moving along, uh, like he said, abortion. I didn't respond. I just stared at him. So, of course, I ended up pregnant. And I don't believe in abortion, so I kept my child. In return, he cussed me out, calling me everything under the sun and saying things like, you got what you wanted. Leave me alone. Then he disappeared. So I went to his grandma's house to let her know the situation because I was moving. Fast forward to the delivery room, I had to deal with his sister and his mother accusing me of trying to trap him. And then asking me how do I know he's the father, etc. Once my child was born, they were singing a different tune because my daughter looked just like the motherfucker. So in this last four years, he's seen her three times. And every time I had to bring her to him, which is six hours away. Girl, you better than me. He has never made an effort to come see her. He's never sent her anything whether I asked him to or not. He's never called her on her birthday or any holiday. He only comes around every few months and asks for pictures which I would send. So last year he found out from his mom that I was dating someone who my daughter looks at as a father. So of course he tries to come back into her life. I let him talk to her on the phone and then he disappeared again. This year he reached out to me again and told me he couldn't talk to uh and I told him he couldn't talk to her and I refused to have him in and out of her life. His response was I'm not going to let you give my daughter to someone else. My husband would like my daughter and her father to have a relationship. Me on the other hand, I don't because he's full of shit and I'm the one who's going to have to explain to her where her father is every time he doesn't show up or he disappears. My daughter believes my husband is her father and I showed her pictures of her real dad and she says she doesn't know who he is. Of course she doesn't. She's four. He's been there three times. Nobody remembers that. I plan on telling her in the future uh, the truth, but right now at age four, I don't think she'll understand. I told him that when the time is right, she will know who he is and the decisions we both made as parents. But as I... As I now, what is now? As of now, I will not be letting him talk to her or sending him pictures just so that he can pretend on social media that he's in her life. Am I wrong? Should I let him talk to her? What would you do? What would you do if your son was at home crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry and the only way to feed him is to sleep with the man for a little bit of money and his dad is gone? Look, don't get me started. <laughs> My bad, y'all. City high. Okay, one album, great though, great album from City High. Anyway, I'm sorry. Moving along, y'all, to the left. My advice. Are you wrong? Yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong, but you're not wrong. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that is I totally understand how you feel. I understand where you're coming from. And if I were you, I would fight with that within myself as well. Because you do not want somebody that comes in and out of your daughter's life. But you also don't want to be the person that keeps them from the father and then when they get older they resent you because you were making decisions to protect them and they feel like that's my dad you should have let me see my dad you should have let me talk to my dad you know what i'm saying it doesn't matter what you try to do to protect your kid they're gonna end up getting hurt when one parent isn't there you should definitely let him talk to her 
You should let him talk to her. Ain't nothing wrong with having a one uh, a father that's there all the time that ain't biologically really your your father. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's that happens every day. And to me, that's a real father, real man. A man that's not the the real father and will take care of the child and love the child like his own. That's a fucking man. Okay, a nigga that you know in a moment of passion doesn't want to pull out and then tells you that it's your fault that you got pregnant like you fucked yourself. Um. Yeah, his mindset was fucked up from jump, okay? And maybe you shouldn't have fucked him without a condom, okay? Some self-responsibility right there, okay, you know? But at the end of the day, you still are being present in your daughter's life because you don't have a choice. You decided to keep her. And you, you know, have a man in your life that's going to treat your child right, and you got this motherfucker that wants to fuck this up. And I understand that mindset, but what you're going to have to get past is that it's not about you. It's not about how you feel and you can't protect your daughter either way because if you keep him from her, at some point she's still going to find out and she's going to feel some type of way about it. So why not just let her talk to him when he does call and let her know that she still has her stepdaddy as her daddy and he loves her the moments when she has to ask you those questions, okay? So yeah, boo, that's my motherfucking advice to you. Um, be a great mother, be a good mother, be a great woman. And take the high road. Let that nigga talk to his daughter. <laughs> okay? I know it sucks. And it probably pains you every time he's going to disappoint her. But at the end of the day, you just be there. And you know what? Mama loves you, baby. Stepdad loves you. And move on. Okay? Uh, Yeah, y'all. So let's get to the rant. I was going to title this rant for the Lil' Kims of the world. But I don't want to single out Lil' Kim. But Lil' Kim is the is, is like the, the, the basis of my thesis for this rant today. Okay? And let me start off by saying growing up, Lil' Kim was not exactly wholesome. Okay? But at the end of the day, there were not a lot of famous, dark-skinned women in the, inter in the entertainment industry. Excuse me. And she was successful. And she was a part of the biggie. Puffy face thing. I'm gonna call it a face. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Right. And she was a part of the bad boy record label. You know what I'm saying? Building <laughs> the whole nine. Okay. She was a part of that era, y'all. And Kim was a great rapper. Like at the end of the day, Kim made great songs that I still listen to today. Okay, and I always thought she was so pretty and so beautiful and such, you know what I'm saying? Like she just made it feel good to be a little brown skinned girl growing up. So when I get older and she gets out of jail, you know, she took the she took the fall. She ain't she ain't telling nobody. We also was behind you, Kim, for that shit. We knew you was gangster for real when you went to jail because you wasn't no snitch. Okay? Even had the support even more. You went in jail looking like regular little Kim with a little filler. Came out, got some old filler. Not all of a sudden the makeup is 10 fucking shades lighter than it used to be. Okay? And the nose is so small, you don't even sound the same when you talk or you rap. Okay? Then you get on fucking uh, uh, little interviews and talk about how, you know, you grew up around Puerto Ricans. And, you you know, that's why you feel like you're Puerto Rican because you grew up around them. And you feel like you were supposed to be Puerto Rican. No, bitch. You were supposed to be African American. You were supposed to be black. You were supposed to be a brown girl that represented for us however sleazy the representation might have been. It was still a strong representation because the bitch still had talent. Because at the end of the day, black girls couldn't just be sluts. And, and, and be famous for it. It didn't go like that, okay? It didn't go like that at all. You had, you actually had to have a talent. And hip-hop had to be formed in order for her to have a place in this world in the first goddamn place. And she's always been hip-hop, and we've always loved her for that. But now, to look at her, and I don't think she's skin bleaching, but I do think that she wears her makeup lighter so she'll look lighter. The surgeries on her eyes so that she looks like a cat woman, Okay? All of the fucking with her face and adding, you know, just adding all of this shit. Y'all, what fucking happened? What happened? We all knew that she had a color problem because Biggie used to make her feel like shit about herself in comparison to light is bright is right. Faith. You know what I'm saying? We know that he compared them to and she probably started to have some insecurities and a color complex that she probably already grew up with because she was a little brown girl. But I used to look at Kim and be like, damn, man, Kim is really beautiful. And now I look at Kim and I'm hurt. Real shit. I'm hurt. I'm hurt by the black girls that feel like they don't want to be their skin tone if it's dark. I'm hurt by the black girls that 
feel like they want to disassociate themselves from being just African American. Like there's something wrong with that. We gotta be exotic and all of this other shit. We gotta be mixed and all of this other shit. We gotta have the same fucking body type as every other big booty weave wearing model Instagram bitch out there. We all gotta look the same. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of these fucking social confines, but I'm especially tired of seeing the people that I feel like represent us fucking over us by changing the things about themselves that made them relatable to us. And Kim being brown is what made her relatable to me. Okay? I wasn't sucking dick, okay? I wasn't, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I wasn't doing that shit when Kim's music came out. But guess what? No matter what people say, we got it going on. Like, we were still here, bitch, okay? I know the lyrics to the song, like, Ganja, can you feel love? I know that this world makes it so hard for us to feel proud of who we are and having, you know, broader noses, having big lips. You know what I'm saying? Like, the facial features, darker skin. You know, we even got our own men out here talking about how they don't like us and they ain't attracted to us when we brown skin or dark skin. Like, yes, I understand. They got a whole bunch of social fucking uh, norms in this world that make black women and darker complected black women feel like shit about themselves. But I refuse to fall victim to that shit. I refuse to let that go by in front of me without saying that that's some bullshit. And you should always be proud of whatever skin tone you are. If you white, be proud of being white without making me feel feel like I can't be proud of being black. So every time one of you bitches do something that make me feel like that, we don't have to talk about this shit, all right? Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I love y'all, okay? Care Bear, share, shake them tits, shake them tits, shake them tits. I appreciate all my followers on Instagram showing me love last night. Love y'all, I fuck with y'all. I appreciate y'all for fucking with me, and I'll see y'all in the next one.